Hello and welcome, my name is Maria de Souza. I'm here to help you to improve your posture, improve the alignment of your body so that you can get rid of aches and pains and look good. Today I'm going to talk about driving and um, looking to the side um, when we're driving. So this is something that I see a lot and also people come to me and tell me how they, they usually uh, it's difficult and they, they feel strain in the back when they look to see if cars are coming in a roundabout for instance. So the reason why you feel that it's so difficult to look um, it's because you're doing, doing it in a way that is not the most efficient way. Like a lot of other movements that we do as we go about life, um, we're doing them in a way that is not the most efficient way of doing because no one ever taught us how to move correctly and to move in a way that doesn't cause strain uh, in the body. So. When it, when it comes to driving, one thing that you need to realize is that the car seats are not designed with good posture in mind uh, or even the safety of your back in mind. Uh, they are designed with other safety um, concerns, but definitely not uh, keep your back safe and um, away from straining. So, you need to adjust your seat uh, and your seating uh, in, in ways that are more um, efficient and help you to keep good posture. So, the common uh, seating um, I see in the cars is like so, where the pelvis is forward and is digging in into the seat. Okay, and the Usually the knees are higher than the pelvis and you drive like so and when you need to look it's very difficult to move the neck and the torso without the pelvis. Okay, When the pelvis is in this situation, meaning that you're sitting on your tailbone, so you have the tailbone between your sitting bones. If you haven't watched my video about the sitting bones and why it's important to know them and understand their function, please go back and watch the, my video about the sitting bones. I'll put the link below. Um, so you have your sitting bones and in the middle of your sitting bones you have your tailbone. So when you're sitting like so, you're not sitting on your sitting bones anymore, you're sitting on your tailbone. Uh, which means that your pelvis is fixed, your pelvis can't move. If you need to turn, you're going to strain the neck, the back, the spine, the muscles around because it's so difficult to turn the torso without the help of the pelvis. Okay? Um, so, how can you sit in a way that is more uh, efficient and in a way that um, help you to keep your back safe and not uh, strain. What you need to do is to find a way to have to sit on your sitting bones and ideally you want your knees lower than your hip joints or your hip joints higher than your knees. So what you can do is to put your car seat as low as it goes down, then you grab a towel or a blanket, fold it and put it at the back and sit on it. The height of the um, towel or blanket is up to you. You need to see how thick this um, uh, blanket is under your, your, um, your buttocks. 
you want to be sitting on the sitting bones okay so you bring your pelvis all the way back to touch the back of uh, the the seat and then put that underneath and you sit right on your sitting bones and that should um, bring your pelvis a little bit higher than your knees or at least in line with your knees okay so it's one or the other um, so do what, what you can. I know that is not always easy, especially if you're tall and then you're going to be touching the ceiling of the car, but do what you can to elevate the pelvis, to sit on your sitting bones and elevate the pelvis as much as you can so that you're not in this situation where the pelvis is sinking and your knees are so high, much higher than your, your pelvis that doesn't allow you to move the pelvis okay so do what you can um, so when you are higher and then you can drive with a more upright torso so you're not sinking anymore you have your pelvis because is you because you sit on your sitting bones and your pelvis is a little bit higher than your knees or at least the same um, um, direction the same height as the knees here it doesn't look my um, my pelvis are still a little bit lower than my knees but I am sitting on the sitting bones and I can move the pelvis now a little bit better than I used before without this support. So, um, and that might be your case as well in, in, in the car. You might not be able to have your pelvis um, higher than the, and the knees. And that's okay. As long as you feel that you have a little bit more freedom in your pelvis and that you driving with the torso long. You can rest if that is uh, um, comfortable for you. Rest the back on the seat. And you drive with the torso long and with the um, hips high and sitting on your sitting bones, okay? When I am driving, I, do, I don't sit back usually, unless I'm in the queue and, you know, I'm stationary. I'll, but normally, I sit with my torso upright, like so. Now, when it comes to turning, when you turn to look in the roundabout or, or so, um, you need to turn from the hips, from the pelvis. Okay, and this is where you're going to have more range of movement and visibility when you move from the pelvis as opposed to move only from the back I can't see very much you can't see very much if you only move from the back and the neck not only that you are straining the back you are straining your spines you are straining the muscles and the discs in the spine because the lower back is not designed to move without the pelvis the lower back doesn't have match a room for twisting okay the neck can easily move without the rest of the spine okay it's designed for that not very much but if we need to look to the side a little bit we can do it without the torso without the rest of the spine however the lower back is not designed to move without the pelvis because rotation there is not like in the neck okay it's much 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 less rotation in the lower back so in order for you to keep your lower back safe you need to move from the pelvis and you can only do that when your pelvis is elevated and you're sitting on your sitting bones. Otherwise, you can't move the pelvis. You, you, and you need to experiment these things, the wrong and the right. And then you choose what's good for you. 
Um, so, pelvis needs to be elevated high and you need to be sitting on your sitting bone. So when you're driving, you get into a roundabout and you need to move, you move from the pelvis. It's much easier and you see much more behind you when you move from the pelvis as opposed to move from the back. It strains. It's not a pleasant movement. And this one is a, is a movement that we are designed to do with the pelvis. Okay, so this is what I wanted to tell you about driving and keeping your back safe as you drive. Um, so do what you can in your car, adjust the seats as much as you can, but remember the key thing is to have your pelvis high and sitting on the sitting bones. Ideally you want the, um, the hip joints a little bit higher than the knees or at least the same um, um, height of the knees so that you have more movement, range of movement in the pelvis to move, okay? And remember to move the torso as one unit, the pelvis, the spine and the head or the neck, all moving as one unit, okay, as opposed to the spine without the torso, without the pelvis. And you'll feel, just do it and you'll feel the strain when you want to turn without the pelvis, okay? so. I hope this is clear. Um, let me know below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and please distribute these to uh, between all your friends and family so that uh, we stop straining ourselves as when we're driving. Um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at a next video and give me the thumbs up if this information was helpful. Thank you so much and I'll see you at a next video. Bye bye now.